After watching the last year fly by with the lockdown, I wanted an adventure with purpose. The idea was to stand up paddleboard from source to sea of the River Severn, the UK's longest river, picking up plastic and document the journey. During the lockdown, I studied the, the route river. and the trouble that plastic These creates on the rivers, but I wanted to see this firsthand. I was setting off with adventurer Emily Scott. Yeah, I, I, Emily and I had first spoken on the Modern Adventurer podcast, and both had a burning desire to make this trip happen. So, as the lockdown was eased, in the early hours of a cool April morning, I left Wiltshire to start this incredible adventure. The first stop was to drive to Gloucester, to catch the train, and then on to Shrewsbury. We were both really excited to finally get going. This was our first adventure since the start of the pandemic. We headed towards the source along the Welsh hills. It was a gentle river stream when we arrived and we had to hike four hours to the source following the river up. It was a beautiful spring afternoon. We reached the source in the late afternoon just as the sun was beginning to go down over the hills. We drank from the dark bog where the River Seven starts to mark the beginning and then started our trip down the hill to start this incredible journey. There was a sense of excitement and anticipation about what we were about to start. And after a four hour hike, we were back in the van heading towards Just finished Gloucester. our hike up to the source of the River Severn and the plan is now to drive towards Welshpool where it's about the right sort of level for paddleboarding. And that is where we start our trip. We woke from a chilly night and headed towards the river. Scouting out starting points in Welshpool, we had to concede that the water was just too low for our paddleboard. So we had to move further down river. On the Welsh-English border outside the town of Crew Green, we found the perfect launch pad to set off. Although the frosty morning air was still present, the sun shined brightly from above, providing the ideal start to our paddleboarding adventure. It took a while to get everything sorted, but after blowing up the boards and strapping our kit for the week ahead, we were finally off. With the water level so low though, the river was dragging and progress was slow. We picked up the rubbish in the river Try to avoid the shallow water, which proved challenging. I mean, this would mean picking up the boards and walking to deeper waters. It had been such a great first day. Coming up to the evening, and this is when we usually try and find a good wild camping spot. As you can see around, it's just banks at the moment, but the next sort of hour or so we will be sort of looking out trying to find a good little spot where we can camp up for the night before heading out tomorrow morning. And we found an events field on the side of the river which wasn't in use. It was quiet with only the humming distant tractors and bird song for noise. It's actually really tasty. Yeah. But after a beautiful sunny day with the clear skies above, we knew we were in for another cold night in the tent. We woke early and watched the river pass by while having our breakfast in our tents. We waited for the sun to come up before packing our way out things and getting ready for another big day. Our 
Our plan was to get to Shrewsbury by lunchtime, where we would have to negotiate the weir and the Shrewsbury Rapids, which we were told could be really difficult on a paddleboard. After setting off, the tranquility of the river, a loud chorus of bursting, was a joy as we paddled down the river and onto Shrewsbury. Last night, we were just going round the aisle, uh, which is, I think, about 10 miles short of Shrewsbury. So, at the moment we're going down, we're coming into quite shallow water, uh, which has been an issue for the last yesterday and today as well. But the hum of nature that had been out with us since the start was soon replaced by the city's hustle. A quick lunch in town. Then we paddled the last few miles down towards the weir. We spent a few minutes contemplating whether or not to paddle over the weir. But we had no choice but to take everything off and drag our boards 50 meters downstream and back onto the water. Now, we had the rapids coming. Every turn as we meandered our way down the river, our sense of anticipation grew. Every white mini torrent we saw, we were thinking, is this it? But there was a growing sense that maybe this wasn't too much to worry about. And out of Shrewsbury and into the farmland, we found a great wild camping spot to set us up for a big day tomorrow. The following day we were up early and while the frost still laid bare on the grass we set off to try and make up ground from the past few days. We put in the miles before lunch through the stunning Shropshire countryside. What are you up to John? Just having a cup of tea. And then we rested up. It is amazing that the second you underestimate the water, it always comes back to haunt you. And when we reached Ironbridge, where we were paddling just under, we came across some rapids. Thinking not much of it, based on my past experience with Shrewsbury, I paddled from left to right, trying to keep my balance on these rapids. Just when I thought I was through, holding my balance, I started to check my stuff to check that everything was in order. Without sort of paying attention to where I was going. And then bang! Smashed straight into the rock and was thrown from my board. The board began to tip and I managed to hold on and drift down water with it until the rapids were over and get to the side of the bank. We carried on and managed to hang up our clothes no, just off a right. ploughed field in the evening sunshine. Emily cooked dinner and we were discussed about our time and whether or not we would make the sea by the end. In the morning we were away early, our usual breakfast in the tents and then packed everything away Headed down, start the day. Our aim was to get to Stourport on 7, or just beyond, but it would take a marathon of a day on the board. The weather was glorious again. The gentle flow of the River Severn and the chorus of birds made the paddling a joy. The 
sound of the steam train provided us with a moment of respite. As it roared past us, we took a moment to enjoy it. We made good progress while picking up any plastic we could. Water was everywhere, but getting enough water had proved problematic for both Emily and I. And in the town of Budley, we stocked up on water in New making sure that we wouldn't run out for the remainder of the expedition. We went in search for a camping spot, but found ourselves at a lock instead. Find a wild camping spot, and now we've had to unpack all our stuff and then walk over, repack it all, and I think, well, as soon as we can find a wild camping spot in the next five minutes, unpack it all again. So, very, very annoying, but it's an absolutely incredible evening. So we're looking forward to getting out of all this wet gear. It was 8.30 by the time we found a camping spot, and we managed with the last flicker of light to set up for the night before the night descended on us. Sheep are mesmerized by us. After a marathon yesterday and the 10 hours paddling, we were slow getting away. The morning frost had kept us tucked away in our sleeping bags till the sun had risen. Once again, we had another glorious day on the paddle. Down the river, we picked up the plastic and rubbish on the trees, but there was only so much we could collect with the vast amount that was there. The previous evening we had come into our first lock where we had had to take everything off and walk down to the other side. We repeated the process in the morning <laughs> only to find paddle boards were actually allowed through. We stopped just before Worcester for lunch in a beautiful spot. <laughs> Although the pictures we might show the sun shining Worcester, it was still we are very chilly into in here. It now we just had some lunch in this area which is quite a nice little spot. Although there's a bit of a chill in the air, the weather has been again, I mean this is what, the 5th, 6th day on the trot of sunshine and I think we forecast for more tomorrow, which is amazing really, for April, or the UK. We now had the excitement of going through the lock on the paddleboard. but it was a welcome change from the previous day's rapids and the continuous logs. Worcester was awash with life from swans, seagulls and ducks to rowers outside the cathedral. We dug between the rows and avoid the chaos of animal feeding. We settled in for the night, watching the sun go down over a delicious dinner. The morning sunrise had disappeared, but after packing up everything and paddling down towards Gloucester, we have some serious miles to go today in order to make it past Overbridge. We were seeing some fantastic wildlife, from herons to ducklings, kingfishers to otters. The river was overflowing with wildlife, and in the countryside, the sound of the birds was deafening at times. We had to make up time, so we decided, bizarrely, <laughs> to make lunch on our boards. We put our boards together, and one was steer. 
while the other one cooked up the lunch. Jab on on the game. Noodles or rice, whatever they are. Um, up there. And my personal porter <laughs> taking me down the river. We gained a few miles while doing this, and it actually proved vital. As when we arrived at the Gloucester docks, it was 20 minutes before it was closed. Now we have This is the final lock. We're in Gloucester at the moment. It's just opening up behind us. And then we are on to the tidal water. This is the last lock and it's all been pretty slow going with these locks. But now what we didn't we realise was that we were moving onto the Gloucester Canal and away from the Severn. We headed over for the late night bore and finally watched this phenomena happen. Although dark, we got a sense of the power of this tidal wave. Awesome. That is amazing. Look how high that's coming. We had pushed hard the previous day and waking up to the sound of rain smashing against the tent. The motivation to get up was low. But we got back on and headed south towards the sea. Emily, what have you got there? A traffic bollard. We knew we were close, but with the rain pouring down on us and the wind picking up, the closer we, are we got, the to harder to sharpness it now, and we've probably got another 10 kilometers to go. Emily is probably just behind me over there, and uh, it's been an absolutely amazing journey, really. When we arrived, it was very underwhelming. The rain and soaked clothes had at time made it a happy end. We were both tired, hence the fall. But in the rush of finishing and the waiting taxi to take us back to Gloucester, we didn't really have time to look around and take in what we have achieved. Well, that's the end of that. And what a trip. Celebrating with Dana. And now, it's been a pretty quick turnaround from finishing. We are now taking a taxi back up to Gloucester, where Emily will catch a train, and I will head home. Oh.